Hi, folks. Hope you're doing well. It's five past seven on the 14th from the 7th, 2020. Oh, okay. This video is about giving a bit of background to a few of the issues I mentioned in others. For example, teeth. Part of the reason why I've struggled with good teeth or haven't done teeth is here in this particular fact that I hate. Well, I don't hate it, I just don't like it in any way, shape, or form. It's a pain in the butt flat. One reason why it's a pain in the butt flat, relevant to teeth, because normally people will brush their teeth in the bathroom sink. When there's pups, you can't do that. The reason is there's such a stupid setup because it's a, a basement flat. There's a sewage pump in the floor of the bathroom that's supposed to take all the sewage up. The problem is it's a really, really poor pump, poor pump and my landlord got himself in a situation where he doesn't have any money so he can't fix anything. One of the problems it has is that if you use the kitchen sink, sorry, the, um, the bathroom sink at all, and it is pretty much at all, if you have water running in the bathroom sink, the water then starts coming through the overflow pipe into the shower. So if at any point there's puppies in that shower, you can't use the bathroom sink at all. So you have to brush your teeth in the kitchen sink. But the problem is with that, there's a drainer and you've got plates here, you've got um, cutlery, and the cutlery bits and the drainer. Yeah, I should put the stuff away. Yeah, of course. But generally speaking, it's easier if it's there, you know, for practicality. You know, you know where it is. There you go. You don't have to go into a cupboard for a plate. Plates on the drainer. There you go. But when you use an electrical toothbrush, as soon as you take the toothbrush out of your mouth, it's spraying toothpaste and saliva and whatever else was in your mouth all over the cutlery all over the plates whatever everything <sighs> added to that is the problem that there's no hot water well there's a hot water system but it's archaic yeah and there's one of these hot water tanks in a cupboard in the lounge but it takes so long to produce hot water and the water pressure for hot water is so poor it really, really is. You put it on and you get probably a, a tenth of the pressure as you as you get from cold water, from the hot water one. Good job the flat doesn't have a bath. If it did, yeah, you could be waiting a week for the bath to fill up. I've been in places like this where the flat, where the place did have a bath and the water pressure was so poor. But by the time the bath actually filled up, the water was lukewarm. Because it's getting cold so in winter. It was getting cold as it filled up. It took so long to fill up. <laughs> and you could just have the hot water tap on. <laughs> you end up with a full bath that's lukewarm because it's getting cold as you fill up because it's filling up so incredibly slowly. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, something quite funny actually. It didn't make me laugh at the time, but it is quite funny. Um, when I first moved in here, I mentioned about the flat to the landlady because I was led to believe before I moved in that everything was actually perfectly good, working properly, etc., etc. When I found out it wasn't, it was about a week or so after I moved in, I mentioned it to the landlady. And the landlady's response was, well, it's better than being homeless. And I thought, well, that's your level. You're renting the property and your level of you know decency with regards to your properties is that your properties are better than being homeless that's your level but she was honest <laughs> she was honest that's a certainty she was honest <laughs> it is a bit better than being homeless yeah, <laughs> it is indeed. Well, the reason why I say it's a bit better than being homeless is because I was homeless in 
the city next over from where I am now. And I had a room there that was basically not much smaller than the place I got now. Not much smaller. And there, yeah, I'm in a situation where really the, the local council had a responsibility to find me somewhere to live. Problem is, they found me this place. <laughs> And basically, they said, I've got to move out of that place when a certain time, and they found this place. They said, there you go, there's a place for you to move into. It's in a town over there, but yeah, you can move into it tomorrow. Didn't like it when I first saw it. I said, oh, great, okay, basement flat. You've got someone living above, you've got a neighbour there, I've got to walk through their property to get to mine. That's not ideal in any way, shape or form. And of course, it's proved to be terrible because that's the very neighbor whose boyfriend threatened to cut my throat if I would speak to her again. Because I spoke to her about her controlling her dogs, her dog. Because, well, for example, the other day, situation the other day, um, I come back with the dogs at night. Um, they were out with their dog. Their dog basically got over Amber. And Amber was submitting to their dog. I called Amber to me. Their dog moved to block Amber from coming to me. And they're just sitting there watching. That's what they're doing. They're sitting there watching. Their dog harassed mine. So, of course, what do you do as a dog owner? You say to the person, excuse me, would you mind getting hold of your dog? Yeah, when I come here. Of course, her response was, your dog should be on the lead. Well, excuse me, that area that my dogs walk through is a public walkway. Your dog should be on the lead in that public walkway. And if my dogs were on the lead, what would happen? Your dog would still come to try and harass mine. I would have them on the lead. And if they got into a fight, I'd probably get bit as a result. Because whether my dog's on the lead or not, you're not going to control your dog or super or supervise your dog in any way shape or form you're just going to sit there watching so that's why i didn't like the place to start with because you've got to go through someone else's garden and even though for the first couple of years it was okay it got worse that's the reality that's what happens that's the reality of the situation is that things happen Yeah, one second. I'll pause that there. We've got some weird things going on with electric. I'll just sort that out. One second. Yeah, I don't know what that was. There was a few click clicks and things were starting to go a bit funny. But, um, nothing going on that I can tell. So there you go. Continue. Yeah, well, as I say, that's the situation with there. Um, it's what it is. You know, it's frustrating. It's annoying. It's, you know. It's part of why I don't like this place. But even if I was in the most perfect environment and I had a front door and a back door, with this basement place, oh, God. Yeah, awful. Because the size of it, you know, you, you stand up in here, you put your hand up, you touch the ceiling. It's depressing. The place itself is depressing. It's, you know, squat. Yeah, you open the front door and you've got this great big concrete wall. There's the steps for the property above. And so, yeah, that's, again, right in your face. So, you know, quite a depressing view when you first open the door. And then you go into your bit of garden. And there's a massive shed now built up there that's blocking the sun. So, again, you know, yeah, not good. Yeah, and as I say, the place itself, with the sewage system, has been wrong and going wrong for a long time. Well, there was a, about a year ago, a year and a half ago, I think now, um, there were puppies in the shower, and I could hear the puppies getting upset about something. So I went in there, 
and the drinking showers were flooding for no reason whatsoever. You know, it was up to the puppy's chest. And that's when I said to Lando, well, come on, this is got, this got to sort this out. Oh, yeah, he said, I'll, I'll sort it out um, in the summer. And it comes to summer. He said, I'll sort it out quick, just after Christmas. He said, I'll sort it out in the summer. Is there any point me asking him to do it? You think? Any point me mentioning that situation to him again? Not really. Fact of the matter is, I've asked him and I've asked him and I've asked him and I've asked him and I've asked him. Yeah. He has no interest in doing it. So, there you go. It's what it is. As I said, I've, I've mentioned on other videos about this place that when I first moved in, when I first had Molly and Chewy, I mean, Chewy, I'd only had him for a couple of weeks. He was still very, very young. Um, well, of course, Molly was quite young. Molly was about six months old. Chewy was about three months old. And this place flooded. It flooded really, really badly. The whole of it. So I had to get the two of them into the shower because that was the only dry bit of floor, dry bit of area for them to go in. You know? And then the landlord, the one who said it's better being homeless, she just said that she expected me to take everything out of the flat, to take the carpet out into the upstairs garden to dry out, and then put it back and then put everything else back in. I mean, the fact that we have taken the carpet a couple of days to dry out, I'd have no bed in here. I'd have nothing in here at all. Because everything has to be taken out. Crazy business. It's just insane. You know, the situation. Uh, but this is the conditions that people are expected to live in. You know, and you're counted as, you, know, you should be counting yourself as blessed because you've got somewhere to live. Oh, really? I don't know. <laughs> no, I understand it. You've got people in worse situations, and those people shouldn't be told they should be counting themselves blessed because there's people worse off than them. Simple. Stop telling people they should count themselves as blessed. Stop it. Yeah, nobody should be telling anyone that they should count themselves as being blessed because there's people worse off. Yeah, you can certainly look at the fact there's people worse off and think, well, okay, you know, things could be worse, but that's true. Of course it is, yeah. Things could be worse. But things could also be so much better. And yeah, that's true. Absolutely, that's true. And as a child of God, where God loves his children and wants to bless them, you know, things shouldn't be as bad as they are for some people. I can't mention myself in that because if God is leading me here for me to learn something or you know, whatever, then, then I'm here for a reason. Other people might be in their situation for a reason. But again, stop telling people they should be, feel blessed. Being in what they consider to be a bad situation. Yeah. As I said, you can't you can't try and put yourself in someone else's shoes so you don't understand their outlook. So if they think it's a bad situation, it is a bad situation. Okay? Simple. It won't be to you, but it is to them. Now, you tell them they're wrong, it means you're calling them a liar. So don't call them a liar. Just accept it's a bad situation. Your, your level of what is counted as bad or, or good is different to theirs. So just, you know. But you saying that a situation is good, would it be wrong, wrong or right for them to say, that's not good, that's terrible. You're a nutcase. You're a complete lunatic if you think this is good. 
if this is your level of good, if you see that as good, then you see that as good. Great. They accept that someone else might see something as bad that you see as good. And vice versa. Something else. A um, bit of background that I'll share. It's sort of background, but it isn't, but it is, but it isn't. That sort of thing. Um, notice the other day. I looked at, um, well, I was doing this audio Bible and did Matthew 1, 2, 3. Um, I think it did the first three chapters of Matthew. Or verses. Verses, not chapters. <laughs> verses, not chapters. So it's one I was driving to somewhere, so it, it turned off once I stopped the car. Um, but now, of course, you've got the three temptations of Christ. And then you've got the three times Christ was denied. The three times Christ said to Peter that basically he loves him, you know, tend to the sheep. He is forgiven. Yeah, that what he did was what he did. That's that's cool. God knows his heart. So yeah, there's a lot of freeze. A trinity is a free. There's a lot of freeze. Free seems to be a, a big number in the Bible. Big number. But you won't find in any of my videos me trying to give an explanation for the free. The why free is such a big number. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm not going to try and come up with some opinion and write a book about it so I can make money. I don't know. If I don't know something, I don't know it. And I'm not going to try and talk about something that I don't know because I don't know it. I mean, I, I've, I've talked about things that maybe I didn't know. But I believe that God has given me an understanding on something that may not have been true in the end. There will certainly be, before my time is up, there will certainly be things that I say, um, believing it was God when it wasn't. That's going to happen. Because we're human, we're going to make mistakes. But I'm never going to intentionally try and talk about something as if I've got something from God if I don't believe I have. Because that's just wrong. It's just wrong. I'm, you know, I'm not interested in doing it. I'm not going to pretend that I have the answer to why free is important because I don't. I mean, you've got maybe a thousand or so books written on that subject. And I doubt that any of them are right. And there may be one or two are, I don't know. Maybe one is and other people have copied it, so that's maybe why one or two are right. I don't know. But to me, it's important. Sometimes I waffle. That's that's a given. Sometimes I will waffle, so I will mention things and I will go off topic and then hopefully come back onto topic. Um, yeah, but I'm not going to say, oh, well, God said, you yeah, know, tell me something about something. And this is the definitive answer. This is the key to this, that, and the other. I'm not going to do that. I believe the key to a good, successful relationship with God is being led by the Holy Spirit. Simple. But that seems obvious. How anyone could not understand that, I don't know. That just seems, you know, as obvious as, you know, when there's a door, you go through the door. You don't try and go through the brick wall. Yeah, that seems pretty obvious. You try and go through the brick wall, you're going to hurt, hurt your face a bit as you walk forwards into it. Yeah. And doors, doors have got handles, so it seems a bit obvious to try and use the handle. Yeah. Of course, when you've got these clever doors nowadays, you might not have a handle. 
But again, you look around it, don't you? You try and study it and work out, okay, how does this thing open? You know, just try and walk into it time and time and time and time again. That would just be blinking stupid. But that's why, to me, yeah, being led by the Holy Spirit, which is God, would help you to have a good relationship with God and to have a functioning relationship where you know you can get to the point where God can use you in a mighty way. That seems obvious. Doesn't seem to be complicated, doesn't seem to be anything that needs an awful lot of explanation. That just seems okay. There you go, pretty obvious really. So there you go. So at the moment, um, I think what I'm going to have to do, if I'm going to leave, going back to the original point, if I'm going to leave cutlery and plates in the kitchen sink area, I'm going to have to boil the kettle, and once I've done my teeth, rinse everything <laughs> over with boiling water before I go to bed. I think that's a good idea. I could just put stuff away. But, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm who I am. I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's there's practical solutions. Just putting stuff away would be a practical solution. Yes, of course. Of course it would be, yeah. <laughs> Going on in Leicester, but... One second, that thing went off. Sorry, that is a video talking about... Um, slave labor that was supposed to be an open secret of around 10,000 people working in slave conditions in Leicester. I did a video on that previously. So you can go and watch that if you wish. Yeah. There's been a few things come out in the last couple of days about that where apparently everyone knew and the person local to the area, the MP, I said that he spoke to the government on numerous occasions saying these these factories need to be dealt with. Um, whereas other MPs in the area have said, well, no, he didn't. So, <laughs> so that's going to be interesting. One says you did. The other says you didn't. No, you didn't. The other says, yes, I did. The other says, no, you didn't. Yeah, that carries on for a while. Let them carry on. In the end, it is a problem. You've got people that have been brought in intentionally um or who are here but on a a visa where it says they can't work so these um nasty people get them to work at these factories for way below minimum wage way below um and the only the only reason why this has come up is because that whole area where this this is all going on suddenly had a massive rise in covid19 cases and this is apparently why, because there were these people being used as slaves to make clothing for internet um, clothing companies. They were being basically forced to work during a time when everyone else was locked down because of the virus. And they were living in overly cramped houses where, of course, you know, the owners of the factories would probably buy houses locally around the area. And then pack 20 to you know, 30 people of these slaves into the house. So when, you've, when you're working, you sleep there. And of course, in those sort of conditions, a virus is going to be rampant. And apparently it was. So, yeah, it certainly is sorting out. Yeah, because it's like you, you've got these people that are banging on about slavery and how slavery was out of order, and how people that made money out of slaves shouldn't be um, made into statues to be celebrated, so they chuck the statues in the river. But they don't care about this. You don't hear them shouting too much about the slavery that's going on in their own country right now. That's okay. Clearly it's not okay, though, is it, really? Well, there you go. 
that will do for today <laughs> for well, for that video. Um, yeah. You take care. God bless, and I will speak to you soon. Bye bye.